Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox and Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In this video, I reflect on the fact that while I like Starship, I would like its capabilities, I don't really want to refuel it in orbit constantly. It's really tedious to send a whole bunch of Starships to refuel a Starship in low Earth orbit, and I would like a shortcut. And so I have developed a shortcut, but, you know, when you think about it, you want a reusable system. Uh, you know, the whole thing was super heavy is reusable. It lands back at uh, Cape Canaveral or potentially on a barge. I don't know about the barge thing, whether they're going to do that or not. But um, so it's reusable and then Starship's reusable. So you need a way to have reusable stages below Starship and deliver it fully fueled into orbit. Well, that's that's quite a challenge, isn't it? And so I have developed an engine. And so below Starship, these are procedural tanks. And more procedural tanks. And the engine I have developed is this. Well, hold on a sec. That. It is an aerospike. An aerospike with 36 nozzles. These are not just any nozzles. Uh, each of these is the thrust chamber of an M1 engine. I will demonstrate. Uh, all the fiddly bits, the gas generator and everything on the M1 engine would be built into the aerospike body itself and not uh, hang out like the, uh, with these chamber, uh, with the thrust chambers. That's how aerospikes work, but uh, I just position it just about, it's a little bit smaller because actually um, I upgraded it because I figure modern technology. The RS-68 has a chamber pressure of uh, 1,488 PSI. Uh, the old M1 engine would have had 1,000 PSI. I figure it could do 1,200 now with modern uh, materials and such. So that uh, allowed for us, uh, it's, it's about the same size really. You can see, so that's that part of the nozzle there. I probably should have tilted these nozzles in a little bit more but then the curvature of the airspace is like, I should probably have followed it a little bit better, but you get the picture. And so I use the stats for, of course, how much this aerospike weighs. You could go like, well, it, it'd weigh less than 36 M1 engines because it's not got the whole other part of the nozzle, right? So there's that, but then you have to have all the heat shielding on this. Then, then again, the tiles, I know the mass of the tiles and there wouldn't be that much. Uh, the surface area of this is huge, but it's not as big as the surface area of the bottom of the space shuttle or anything. And I say that, you know, you go like, well, space shuttle is pretty heavy. Yeah, but this is 326 tons, so um, the space shuttle is not that heavy. Uh, so we end up with an engine. I assumed each uh, thrust chamber would be producing um, about what the M1 did. Uh, Again, it's a toss-up because, first of all, I've upgraded it, so the thrust chambers are producing, uh, have more pressure, and so they should be producing more thrust, but then I don't know exactly, I I can't calculate error spikes. I tried, um, I've done a good faith attempt to calculate error spike uh, performance, but I'm not sure about it. So, basically, we've got the thrust from 36 M1 engines that... Uh, would be running at uh, 1200 PSI and uh, we've got the ISP assuming that the sea level ISP is equivalent to this nozzle ratio here and then the vacuum ISP is equivalent to sort of that nozzle ratio out there right but not not really fully I I discounted it a little bit so we end up with 380 and 446, which means that it's more efficient than the shuttle main engines at sea level, but less efficient in vacuum. Mm. You can uh, uh, give your views on that. The diameter of this entire thing is 25 meters. And I decided to put shielding capacity. So we have the little flaps to protect it for potential splashdown, for re-entry, whatever, uh, what have you. Uh, yeah, just wanted to keep them protected just in case somebody had the bright idea of saying that the nozzles would melt at like room temperature or something, as some of my en other engines seem to. But yeah, so that's the idea. It is a huge engine and it has very good performance. 
I really wanted this to be more like a Phil Bono's rhombus, but it ended up be needing to be really tall. So that's why it's called Mega Bono, because um, it's uh, sort of designed after a design by Phil Bono from Douglas Aircraft and Spacecraft. Uh, and yeah, it's based on that design. But that would have had uh, J2 engines instead of uh, the nozzles being M1. So I produced that variant as well. So this is the, so this is the ED7M aerospike. But I also have an ED7J aerospike, much smaller. But same principle, except the thrust chambers are those of the of the J2 engine. And this is the J2S engine that I based it on. So same idea, uh, same model. It's just resized, and the stats are a little bit uh, adjusted. So this uh, ED7J aerospike has the thrust of 36 J2s, um, so 40, 000, nearly 41,000 kilonewtons. And um, the sea level ISP ends up being a little bit less, but the vacuum ISP, I crunched it with uh, rocket propulsion, uh, what you want to call it, uh, rocket propulsion analysis light. So I went with that. I just gave everything 10 ignitions, I don't know. I allowed throttling on the assumption that we could shut down some of the chambers. Steering is by differential throttle of the chambers somewhat, but then I don't know if M1 can do that. So that's a toss up. But uh, yeah, this J2 one is 50.4 tons. Uh, the thrust weight ratio is not unreasonable. Uh, should be in line with the J2s and M1s uh, thrust weight ratios. I also made, so I'll link these in the video description, of course. I, nothing would give me more pleasure than for you to abuse these. And uh, so there's an RL10 one. The thrust weight ratio of the RL10 one is not as good as the J2 or the M1s because of scale, right? Because, uh, you know, well, it's just because of scale. So the RL10s uh, just on their own don't have very good thrust to weight ratio. So, mm, yeah, so that's the ED7R Aerospike, R4 RL10, 36 RL10s. Um, then these are uh, B2 style, but uh, 3,960 kilonewtons, but 355 sea level, 444 vacuum on this, in this case, 10 tons. So yeah, three aerospikes. Same model, just resized. All right, but the question is whether this will work, and that's not obvious. I have not brought it to orbit. I don't know. Uh, Delta V-wise, it may not be great. So I, I decided to use procedural tanks so that nobody suspected cheaty tanks, at least. The engine is uh, enough of an innovation, if you will. Uh, so... We got 1.4a thrust weight ratio off the pad. If you sum up the, you know, they, these are just fuel tanks. They're drop off fuel tanks as the Phil Bonoramas would have. And so we see 8,800 meters per second. That doesn't seem enough for orbit. Um, we don't have a payload in Starship. It is 1,200 tons. We might have to underfuel it to make this work out. I mean, I could have put 42 M1 engines. I know memes. Uh, but uh, that was annoying because it, when you array things like this, you know, 360 gets divided by 36 a little bit better. So basically it came down to that I didn't want too many decimal places. And yeah, 16,554 tons on the pad. We've got auto strutting, of course. And we I had to assume some throttling. So we we're assuming again that the some of the nozzles get shut down or something to throttle it because otherwise the thrust weight ratio gets really high so we couldn't manage that all right but can we get to orbit is this going to be enough or because we do have the high thrust weight ratio so maybe that'll make up for the fact that we don't have 9,500 meters per second let's see by the way it seems like for uh for air spike engines the gas generator exhaust actually gets uh, pipe down into the bottom of the spike and out nozzles at the bottom of the spike, but I'm not sure about that arrangement and how good it is for... Uh, so I left that part out for now, but, you know, I, I want reusability, and uh, I, I suppose it'd be all right if you heat shield the pipes that carry the gas generator exhaust out, but 
we'll have to think about that. And again, you can debate the performance figures for this engine. But, uh, well, there it is. Starship on the Megabono. Not the best name I know, but here we are. Okay, so throttle up, SAS is on, and ignition. It takes a while for this to actually ignite. Now I gave it uh, some new real plume SSME plumes, and you know they're they start out red. I mean they they have a little blue flame and then they got a lot of redness. As you can see, I tried the Hydrolox lower plume, but that ended up in some weird position. The, the plume ended up up here for some reason, so I didn't understand that. And just changing the plume to this SSME one fixed it, so... Whatever. Uh, here we go. Now, I don't have the reusability stuff going on here yet. We would have to... Uh, the reason I wanted it to be shorter is because I wanted to bring the tanks down, too. Uh, yeah, I wanted to bring the tanks down too, and I didn't really want the external tanks either. But um, it seemed not to be the best situation. I'll see what the capacity of this is if we don't have the external tanks and we just have a short body. But maybe I just need to create a custom body. These are just cryogenic tanks. The outer external tanks uh, do not have MLI layers, the inner tanks do have full MLI layers. We'd obviously need a controller and RCS thrusters and all that business, but first I wanted to see whether uh, this size thing could take um, Starship to orbit fully fueled. Then I'll figure out the details. But then if we don't drop off the external tanks, will we have enough Delta V? Gimbling on the aerospikes are it's only two degrees. And maybe they could actuate the nozzles on the airspike, I don't know. There's a lot I don't know about how airspikes do their thing, so I have thought up combining a linear aerospike with a ram uh, not not a ramjet, a scramjet. And I don't know how well that'll work out. I will probably look into... I have a lecture series on uh, ramjets and scramjets that I'll watch and see how feasible that might be. But you can see the benefit of that. And since a linear aerospike, you know, the shape, shape-wise, it's not too different from the shape of a scramjet on the back end. So if you could build in uh, aerospike into a scramjet, that would save some you know, ha save having a separate rocket engine. Okay, we are going to drop off the external tanks. M maybe putting parachutes would make them recoverable, I don't know. It's po possible, I mean, they're not that far away. Okay, separation. I don't know what that poof was, but okay. Not a perfect asterisk, but okay. They're sort of in pairs. Yeah, I think we should just flatten out that time to lap laps. This is going high. Okay, but we do need to get to space, so pitch up a little bit. And I'll thrall down now. Perhaps I shouldn't have put Kerbals on this right away, but... Thrall's down to a quarter, so that would be like only nine of the... the thrust chambers being on. I would guess that if you uh, thrall down and shut off three quarters of thrust chambers, they would not be reigniting at that point. It's pretty close, but I don't think we're gonna quite make it with this load. Okay, well, it's a little bit of a balancing act between the 
remaining stage time and our time to Apoapsis. We really would like to get to Apoapsis because it's just barely beyond the atmosphere. Still, high G's. I don't know. It's at like 13 and I'm throttled down and everything. Maybe... Okay, well, that's the end of it. So, we were maybe 200 short. So, okay. Well, I mean, one solution would be just to underfuel Starship. But we really don't have any cargo, so it's a bit distasteful. So, yeah. We'll try and make the body just a little bit bigger and see if it works. Of course, there's a trade-off there because as you make the body bigger, um, the thrust-to-weight ratio goes lower and that can hurt uh, by in increasing the drag and gravity losses. So we'll see. Okay, so now we are over 17 tons. I basically increased the diameter up here for the main tank and also its diameter down there by a little bit. I did not increase the utilization, which is already at 93%, so that's probably as high as I'm going to go on that. So we'll see if this is enough. Um, Delta V, According to Delta V reading, it's barely enough. Note, by the way, that without a payload, uh, currently Starship has 8,433. Uh, so yeah, yeah, that's a lot of Delta V. But anyway, that's without a payload. SAS on, throttle is up. And ignition. And let's sit and wait for this thing to rev up. I don't know what the rules for how long it takes to rev up are, but... I don't think my physics is that slow, so... Let's get building. Oh, there, there we go. Alright, let's release. So again, this has the mass of 36 M1s, so... Again, it, you could argue that it should be less mass. Um, I don't think you could argue that it's got to be more mass than it is right now. Maybe, I mean. It is true that uh, closer to the nozzles up here, uh, heat tiles probably wouldn't be sufficient. Uh, we would need them to... Um, we would need some active cooling uh, passing the hydrogen through or something like that for when the engines are on. Of course, uh, heat tiles will be fine for coming back. I think. <laughs> I think. I haven't done uh, CFD analysis or anything like that, so... It's possible in some locations we would need carbon-carbon tiles or something. The leading edge tiles of the shuttle, that kind of thing. But then again, Starship itself doesn't seem to need it, so... It'll be a whole process getting this to be reusable. I'll s build the tank. The goal is to have an SSTO with this, not have these drop tanks, but... Perhaps it's better just to have the drop tanks. Uh, it's, uh... I mean, you, you just put parachutes on them and fish them out, but then... Yeah, I mean... could work either way. We could have a capacity with it being an SST without the drop tanks and a different capacity with the drop tanks. I'll ponder it, but I'll design a fuel tank. Proper fuel tank for it. Previously with the Sajita rocket, uh, using you know structural analysis, I was able to come up with numbers for a tank that ended up matching procedural parts pretty well, so the same principles should work, and I'll probably end up with the same mass as these procedural part tanks. We have dreams. We have dreams of lifting Starship to orbit without, uh, and then not having to refuel it, having all of its fuel in. And when you think about it, a lot of inventions really came down to being people being lazy. You know, like the microwave, washing machine, sofa. I don't know if the sofa was invented so much, but, well, probably, but you get the picture. Okay, drop tanks away. Such pause. Off they go.
marginally better asterisk this time. So yeah, if you're using this model, you might not like the covering flaps. You do have to put a tank under there. Because the node is at the top of the engine, but the covering flaps extend beyond that node. But I thought it was a nice touch. I really should have put 42 M1s instead of 36. I think that would have made this a lot easier. I think ultimately the loss in thrust weight ratio did have an impact. We'll see exactly how much we still need after this. We're not quite getting into uh, space here. <laughs> Falling a little bit short here. Okay, yeah, this doesn't seem very good. Let's try with a steeper tra trajectory. Okay, I'm gonna give this a third try and we'll go steeper. I haven't resized the tank since the last try. And after that, I'll let you guys have a go. I'll link the air spikes in the video description and you can see how it goes for you. But I'll be making other adjustments and trying to make a proper body so that it can re-enter. I'm, I'm envisioning more of a capsule shape so that it can re-enter nicely, like a capsule. Uh, it'll probably have little RCS thrusters and some fuel for that and a controller and all that business. We don't have that on here right now. So yeah, uh, that will be step two. But let's see how this works and if it can work. Let me try to really minimize the drag here. And... Launch. Okay, we are past the speed of sound and again trying to minimize the drag here. After all, it's pretty wide body. So, I'm trying to stick to the prograde vector as much as possible to minimize that. Okay, preparing for drop tank separation. And separation. Alrighty. I think it's a better trajectory overall, but I don't think we're going to clear this into orbit. So I will have to make further adjustments. Maybe we'll have to go to higher utilization levels. I could reduce the amount of multi-layer insulation on it. I put all 10 layers that are available in this version of procedural parts. We could do with less. It's not that heavy though. But then splashing down will re require parachutes, which is another mass. But reserving fuel to use thrust to land would also be another mass, so... And probably we can't throttle this down enough to make a soft landing with it. I mean, even throttle down to whatever it's throttled down to, it produces more than 5 G's with Starship on top, so yeah. This, there's no amount of reasonable throttling I can give this, even if we assume that there was only four chambers running. Um, I think that would still be too much thrust weight ratio to manage a safe landing with the engine. So there is that. The animation for covering up. Let's just see how that operates there. Yep. And then close. Very slick, if I do say so myself. But we are not here. Uh, in fact, I think we did worse this time, adding more fuel. Maybe we should increase the thrust to weight ratio. I mean, normally 1.7 is like optimal. So maybe we can just make it shorter and smaller with less fuel and less delta V and just and maybe not put the Kerbals on because the thrust weight ratio would be so high. We'll send them up on a separate mission in like a dragon or something. Yeah. Maybe that would be better. Well, I'll think about that, but for now... We, we, we have possibilities here. Maybe a little bit of... No ignitions remaining? What do you mean? 
These things should have a lot of ignitions. Okay, anyway, 1,200 tons nearly to orbit on a one and a half stage system. Well, I think that's still something. So, leaving it there, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.